So we just looked at the optimum way that a leaf knows how to spiral its leaves to capture the most sun that it can to survive. And it does that in the Fibonacci sequence. This was the sequence that has become now known as the famous Fibonacci sequence, which has inspired many, many metaphysicians and scientists and teachers and people like myself. We believe it's one of the ultimate secret codes that nature expresses itself in. We can create or tap into the world of nuclear geometry, literally going through the back door of nuclear physics by the world of mathematics. By, by entering this realm of mathematics, we're getting the same diagrams as what scientists are with their microscopes. NASA are secretly using this Vedic mathematics in what we call robotics, artificial intelligence, because they, they're trying to understand how does the brain really work? How do we simulate the brain? Oh, the brain can just do mental calculations like this. What's 96 times 95? It must be 96 less 5 is 91, 5, 6 is a 30. Yep, 9,130. The future in sound and geometry is to be able to see the shapes of sound. We've done a lot of work with chanting the sounds of the chakras, like when we chant the sound of the heart chakra, it has a specific frequency and it's an ah. When you feel love you feel that sound of ah. But if you were to measure that sound as a frequency and, and to see how that sound vibrates on a plate of glass with lots of fine sand particles, the sand particles magically in front of your eyes would form the shape of the Star of David. So shape and sound relate to frequency vibration. We suddenly found a way of travelling through the dimensions, of changing our size from an atom into a galaxy and conversely. And this was the secret of the Pythagoreans. They knew this relationship between Icosa Dodeca. So this is nature's optimal form, is the dodecahedron. And it's the three-dimensional view of the pentacle. Just if you think of it as a square, is really a cube. A triangle is a tetrahedron. Well, what you're looking at now is, well, what's the three-dimensional view of the pentacle? This is what the pagans were really originally worshipping. It wasn't just the pentacle. That was just the shadow of a higher principle called dodeca. We call this the language of light. You could also call it the angle of the angels, in a sense. This is a divine language, and it's all based on the fusion of two sacred geometrical genders. One shape, many faces. In Latin, you would call it e plutibus unum. Out of the many is the one. The one form, but with many views. And that gave us our alpha, beta, the alphabet, the language of the gods. Sacred geometry helps solve practical and technological problems. So this is basically the, the, the principle of implosion, explosion, involution, evolution, in-breath to the heart, out-breath. It's as a breathing. And, and that's why scientists now are playing with these toys. In fact, scientists are even calling the universe, they're actually calling it as an imploded universe called impliverse. So there's a lot of new words being coined at the moment to, to satisfy the ability to explain the, the level of consciousness that's risen at the moment. Our, our concepts of the world are changing at the moment and we need to embrace this principle which we never really thought about before. It's learning how to breathe again in, out, centre, out and always being interconnected with everything. Mem is the ancient word for water and Ori is the ancient Hebrew word for light. So when you put the two words together, Mem, Ori, memory is about this interplay of water and light, liquid light 
It's part of our starlight memory, our connection back to the stars. And I believe that this three-dimensional golden mean spiral, which is us, is part of our ascension process. So that's why we've been doing these meditations based on the tube torus donut, because it's a natural ability to travel into our heart, to journey to the centre of the heart. I originally was studying to become a doctor, but I was one of the victims of the state where I got high grades in mathematics, but I literally was forced to study higher level mathematics, but a bit, a bit like a robot. I had to pass calculus and all this difficult algebra, but I honestly really didn't understand what I was learning. So I entered a quest. My personal quest was to understand the truth of mathematics. Mm -hmm. My father was a builder by trade, so I'm actually also a bricklayer. So I was always um, engaged in when I was building corners of the house. I was working with mathematical gauges, and I had to do quick mental calculation in my head to understand how to do volumes and surface areas and tiles. And yeah, so I've always had a natural aptitude for numbers. I find a lot of people cry in my workshops because I've somehow touched on a very deep wound a mathematical wound of all things that they thought they were dumb because they didn't understand this curriculum and my work is to show that um, we need to teach mathematics visually rather than rote learning one side the academic left where some people um, excel with the logical academic left they're just naturally engaged in doing well but 90 percent of children are very visual and they've got to be taught mathematics through pictures and shapes and sounds and smells and colours and working out under a tree and I find that children sitting under fluorescent light, if you were to do kinesiology, we, we've, we're already weakened so there's really not much chance that a child's going to adore and love mathematics so my job is to instill that enthusiasm and love for this ancient star language. Right. Uh, I believe that your child really needs to learn what we call Vedic mathematics. Mm -hmm. It's based on an Indian or Hindu system from 3,000 years ago. So 3,000 years ago the yogis were sitting down and you could ask them any complex mathematical question and they just used their feminine right brain to see the answer by understanding shape, pattern recognition and they invented the zero and the decimal point. 3,000 years ago these remote yogis on the hilltop created a highly intelligent language of numbers which without the zero and the decimal we wouldn't even have computers today. This knowledge got buried and I've spent the last 25 years of my life just letting the general public know that the best thing you could teach a child is what we call Vedic mathematics. It's a mental one-line system of arithmetic that encourages confidence and memory power and when a child learns these basic 16 formulas, then you can start teaching them all the other stuff. It, like, it literally switches them on.